If you landed on this video, DaVinci Resolve 18 for beginners, everything you need to know to get started here in Resolve. Maybe you're brand new to video editing or maybe you're just coming from another program and you want to learn how to work in Resolve a little bit better. That's what I'm going to teach you today, the basics to create your first video here in DaVinci Resolve. And as a bonus just for coming to the video, I'm giving you guys some free files that you can follow along with, download, you can practice with. There are going to be a couple video clips here and that's what we're going to use to work through this video here. Go ahead and download them so that you can follow along too. But hey, if you are new here, my my name is Jason Yadlowski and I've got a lot of videos on my channel teaching you how to use Resolve, answering a lot of your common questions and a lot of audio stuff because audio is super important when it comes to your videos. Speaking of audio, I would like to thank today's sponsor of the video, Epidemic Sound. I love Epidemic Sound. I wouldn't recommend them to you guys if I didn't think they weren't awesome. They have great sound effects and music. We're going to talk about them more when we get into the audio section of this video. Huge thank you to Epidemic Sound. There's a link in the description below. You can go check them out. So there is a lot of good stuff in this video for you. And I'm going to timestamp everything down below here so you can jump to just the parts that you're interested in. And with that said, let's go. No, really, let's go. As we jump into DaVinci Resolve here, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've already got it installed and you're good to go. The program's on your machine. You're ready to go. So go ahead and open it up. And the first thing we need to talk about is how DaVinci Resolve stores our projects. Resolve uses what they call libraries or databases to store the project files. Now, this is not your media files. This is not your video. This is not photos or other things you want to put in your video. It's just the project file. And it's not going to take up a whole lot of room on your hard drive. So DaVinci Resolve, or Blackmagic Design, I should say, recommends that we keep our database, or our library as they call it now, on our internal hard drive. That's going to give Resolve the best performance for your projects. Now, you can keep it on an external drive, but they recommend that you keep it on your internal drive. So that's what I'm going to recommend, too. Now, when you first start up DaVinci Resolve, it may create a database for you, but if not, check it out. This is what it's going to look like. It should come up with a window that looks something like this, which is called the Project Manager. And you should have a database over here or a project library. I got to call it project library now in 18 here. A project library over here on the left-hand side. If you don't see it, there's a little icon right here. You can click on that guy. That's going to open it up. And if you don't have any project library in here, you can go ahead and click on add project library. And then you can go ahead and create a new project library. It's going to pop up this little window right here. Hit create and go ahead and create a library. And this is going to house all of your project files. And like I said, the project files are not that big. I have a couple years worth of YouTube videos in here. And my project library here is only maybe like a gig when I back it up. So keep it on your internal drive. It's not going to take up a lot of space. You don't have to worry about it. When it comes to your media files, the files you're actually going to use for your project, you can keep them wherever you want. I would recommend an external hard drive if you don't have a ton of space on your internal hard drive. And I would recommend an SSD because if you use a slower hard drive, that could be a bottleneck for your video editing. So make sure you've got a fast drive. I like the Samsung T5 or T7 SSDs. I've got one of each. So that's where I keep all the media for my project on that external drive. So that way it doesn't clog up my internal hard drive. So back in Resolve here, if you've got your library set up, you're probably not going to see any projects over here on the right hand side. But these are all our projects. And this is where they're all going to live. So we're going to go ahead and just start a new project here. Go ahead and click new project. It's going to pop up this window for you. Go ahead, give it a name and we're going to get started. I'm going to call mine how to remove a battery because if you went and downloaded the free files, link in the description down below, you can go pick up a few free files so you can follow along with us, make your own video and give you some footage to practice with here in Resolve. Once you've got your name in there, go ahead and hit create. And now we are inside our first project here in DaVinci Resolve. Now there is a lot of ins and outs to Resolve and how it works and how to set things up, but this is more of a quick start guide. I'm just going to show you guys how to get started and how to get going in here, give you a quick overview of things. And I'm going to have a more in-depth crash course here for DaVinci Resolve 18. I do have a more in-depth one for version 17, which is very similar to version 18 here. So you can check that out. But this is just to get you started. I'm not going to go super in depth in anything, but this is going to give you some of the tools, tips, tricks, and things that you want to know as you're getting started here in Resolve. So now that you've got your first project created here in Resolve, let's take a look at Resolve just in general, how it's set up, what we have going on here. And this is going to be a real high level view. Okay. I'm just trying to give you guys the tools you need to just jump in there and get started. This is not going to be a huge long crash course. I do have a DaVinci Resolve 17 crash course that'll give you tons of information. And I'm working on a DaVinci Resolve 18 crash course that's going to be a lot more in depth. But this is high level view. I actually taught my nine year old how to use DaVinci Resolve this way when she was nine. And I'm just going to get you in there and get you going. But let's take a quick look at Resolve and just the layout of what's going on here. So we're in our first project here. And along the bottom here, we have different tabs, right? So this is where we can do different things in Resolve. So if I come back to my media tab here, this is where I can import media into Resolve. 
any kind of media that you want. Next tab here we have is the cut tab. And this is a simplified editor. It's great for going through, you know, high amounts of footage, helps you get a good rough cut going. You can do all of your editing here if you'd like. And sometimes if there's things we can't do so easily here in the cut tab, we jump over into the edit tab where we've got full control of everything. We can change any kind of settings that we want. But the cut tab is good to make quick videos, throw things together quickly. Um, and it does have some great tools in here. The next tab we have here is the edit tab, and this is where I'm going to recommend that you do the majority of your work. Now, the cut tab is great, and it's perfectly fine to use that if you'd like to. I prefer the edit tab myself, so that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video, and I just find that I usually end up in the edit tab anyway, so I don't really jump into the cut tab a whole lot. So edit tab is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. Next, you've got the Fusion tab. This is where you can do uh, motion graphics, you can do advanced masking and 3D work and all kinds of really fancy things. Fusion is going to allow you to do that kind of stuff. The next tab we have here is the Color tab, and the Color tab is where we can do all of our color grading. Now, DaVinci Resolve was known for color grading before it even got into all the other video stuff, and it's got a super robust set of tools here. We're not going to get into it too much in this video because this is a quick start guide, but you can do all your color grading right here in the Color tab. Next up, we have one of my favorites, Fairlight, and that is where we can work with the audio for our videos. Audio is super important. I love me some good audio. I've got tons of videos on working with your audio because your video might look great, but if it sounds bad, Let's be honest, nobody wants to watch it. So we've got Fairlight, tons of great audio tools in there. And the last tab here we have is the Deliver page or the Deliver tab. And this is going to allow you to render out your video. We've got a lot of different options here on how we can render our video, include subtitles. We can do just video, just audio. Lots of options here. I'll share some settings with you guys that I use for all my YouTube videos here that are pretty handy. And throughout this video, I'm probably going to mention other videos that I've already created that can kind of help give you guys more information and just continue to help you learn more in DaVinci Resolve. So with that high level overview, let's just jump right into the edit tab because that's where we're going to get started. So click on this guy right down here. We're in the edit tab now. And let's talk about how do we bring media into our project, right? We've already got our project. How do we start bringing in media? Well, it's as easy as just dragging and dropping media. You can drag and drop almost anything directly into Resolve. So if you went and downloaded those free files that I'm providing in the link down below, that's what we're going to be using to edit together this video. So now that we're in the edit tab, this is where we're going to really get going on our project. Let's take a quick look at the window just so you understand what you're looking at. And then we're going to start bringing in our media and start editing together a video. So looking at the window here, if yours doesn't look the same as mine, come on up to workspace and reset UI layout. So if you hit the reset UI layout, we should be looking at the same thing. Now I'm working on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it should look very similar. There's really not many differences between the PC and the Mac version. So we should be looking at the same thing here. So just taking a quick look at the window, we've got our media pool at the top here. This is where all of our media for our project is going to live. Your video files, your photo files, your or different assets that you might have, uh, stock footage, whatever it might be, audio, music, sound effects, you name it. It's all going to live right here in the media pool. Next, we've got the effects. So if I close my media pool just by clicking on it, we've got effects. And under effects here, we've got a lot of different things. We've got video transitions, audio transitions. We've got titles. Open effects are different blurs and all kinds of other uh, more advanced effects. We've got audio effects and different filters that we can apply. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, and I'm not going to cover most of it in this video. But there's a lot of things going on in here that you can use that come with Resolve, whether you're in the free version or studio. So there's a lot of stuff in here you might want to take a look at. But these are where all of our effects are. Now, the index, you don't have to worry about that if you're just getting started. Sound library, don't worry about that if you're getting started. The mixer. The mixer right here is one of my favorite parts of the edit tab here because I'm an audio guy and I love me some good audio. So we're going to be taking a look at that in a little bit. But you're going to want to know that it's there so that you can set your audio levels properly right here in the edit tab. You don't even have to jump into Fairlight for your audio work. If you don't want to, we can do a lot of basic audio work right here in the edit tab. Next, we've got metadata. Don't even worry about that. And then finally, we've got the inspector. Now, the inspector is going to be where we can make a lot of adjustments to our clips. And you'll see that in a second. Below that, we've got two viewers here on the left hand side. We're going to have our source viewer, which is the footage from our media pool that we're looking at. And on the right hand side, we're going to have our timeline viewer where we're going to see our footage that's in the timeline. And a fun little tip, if you see this little square window right here, if you click on that, it's going to show you just a single viewer. So depending on whether you've double clicked on something in your media pool, it's going to show your source viewer, or if you're clicked down in your timeline, 
it's going to just show you your timeline view. Below that, we've got a bunch of different tools here for watching our video. We've got our uh, transport controls here, you know, our forward, rewind, reverse, stop, all that. We've got our timeline view options right over here. This is important, and it's going to affect the way that your timeline look. We're going to take another look at that in a second here once we get some footage into the program because then it's just going to make a lot more sense to you. Then we've got our editing controls right here, which we will take a look at in a second when we get some footage in. You can adjust your volume right here on the uh, right-hand side. And then down here is our timeline, and that's where we're going to be editing our footage. Are you guys with me? You're doing great so far. So now we're going to actually take those files that I provided for you. Link in the description below if you want the freebies. That's right, freebies. We're going to bring them into DaVinci Resolve. How do we do that? Well, the quickest way to get any of your media into DaVinci Resolve is to drag and drop. You can pretty much drag and drop almost anything into DaVinci Resolve. Video files, pictures, assets, music, sound effects, you name it, drag and drop is going to be the fastest way to get it in there. So taking a look in Resolve here, if I bring on my, uh, my free files here, and these are the same ones that you guys should see as well, what I want to do is drag and drop them in. Now, I can either drag and drop them directly into the timeline if I want to. So if I just select them all, I can drag them down drop them in the timeline, and it's going to create a new timeline for me. Now, let's say I don't want to do that. I don't want to drag it directly into the timeline. I want to bring it into the project so I can look through it a little bit and just maybe select portions of the clip that I want to insert into my timeline. So looking in Resolve here, you want to open up your media pool, go find your files, and I'm just going to select them all, drag them over into my media pool, and I'm going to drop it in. So in my media pool, now I've got all those files right in my project. Now, they're not in my timeline yet, but they are right here in my project. And a little bonus tip, if you want to keep organized, we can put our media in different bins, right? So right now we see master, so that's just your overall bin. If you right-click on here, you can say add new bin, and you can make multiple bins. We can call this uh, video footage or whatever, and you can have different bins for different things. Maybe your audio in one, sound effects in one, whatever you want to do. But do your best to try and stay organized. It's just going to help your project go smoother in the long run. Now, let's take a look at what we've got here. So we've got our video files, and if I double-click on one of them, it's going to open it up in my source viewer, which is right over here. So I can scrub through this using this little playhead down here. Right? I can play using the space bar. You work with the audio, work with the video. I can set in points and out points on this source clip right here. So if I only want a portion of the clip, I don't want the whole clip, right? I can use these little guys right here, set an in point, move my player okay. forward, Correct. and set an out point. And now only that portion of the clip will be brought into my timeline. How do I bring it down into my timeline? You've got different options on how to do that, but first, we need to create a timeline. So one way to do that is just to come to your source viewer, click on your clip, hold, and drag it down into the timeline area. Now you've created a timeline that has the same frame rate as the clip that you just brought in there. So that's one way that you can create a timeline. I'm going to undo that. Let's say I want to create my own timeline and maybe I need to adjust some settings in there. Well, if I come over to my media pool, I can right click and say timelines, create new timeline. Then that's going to open up this window for me and I can name it whatever I want. We're going to call this uh, battery replacement. Now, you can select the number of video tracks and audio tracks if you want, but we can always add some more later. Now, you can use the project settings, which we didn't talk about how to set those up, but when you bring in a piece of footage, let's say that it's, uh, I don't know, 30 frames per second, you might get a little note in Resolve that says, hey, do you want to change your project settings to match the current clip? And if you want to match your frame rate for the project to the clip that you're bringing in, go ahead and say yes, and that's going to do all the work for you and set up your project. Now, maybe you've got clips at different frame rates, right? Because maybe you got some slow-mo, so you got a 60 frame per second clip. Well, in that case, maybe you don't want to change the project settings, right? Maybe you want to leave them how they are. But when we set up a timeline here, we can set our timeline to be whatever we want. So I'm going to uncheck this Use Project Settings box, and now we've got options. We can come over here to Format. We can select whether we want a 1080 timeline, whether we want a 4K timeline or even larger. Now, with the free version, you are limited to certain timeline sizes, I believe, and certain exports, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to recommend that you always edit in a 1080 timeline because it's going to be easier on your machine. So even if you have 4K footage, we can edit in a 1080 timeline, and then we can always change the timeline to be a 4K timeline and render out our project in 4K, and Resolve is going to use those high-res files for you. So... I would recommend use that 1080 timeline so that it doesn't bog down your machine too much. And then you've got your frame rate right here. You can select that and you see all these different options that we have here for different frame rates. So for me, in this case, I'm doing a 23.976 frames per second. And when I brought in my video clips, it didn't ask me to change it because that's how my project was already set up. Under here, we have mismatched resolution. So if you bring in something that's not the same size as your timeline, you can leave it as scale the entire image to fit. And that should be just fine. 
Now the monitor section here, you don't have to worry about that. And output, this should match whatever you set up in the format menu here, so you shouldn't have to worry about that either. Once you've got that all set up, go ahead and hit create. And there we go, now we have our timeline right here, and now we're ready to start editing together our video. So let's say I wanna add this first clip into my timeline. I'm gonna actually, I just wanna redo these uh, in and out points. I'm gonna select the entire clip here, in and out. And when I bring my clip down in, if I click on the image up in here in the source viewer, just somewhere in the middle, drag it down, it's gonna bring both my audio and my video. Okay, cool, so most of the time that's what you're gonna want. But what happens if you don't need the audio, right? I just wanna bring in the video. Well, if I undo that, and when I hover over my clip, you see we've got this guy right here, right? We can bring in either video only, or we can bring in audio only. So if I grab just the video one, click, hold, and drag down, just the video. If I come to the audio section, click, hold, and drag, boom, just the audio. It's a really handy feature to have to be able to bring just the video, especially when you're working with some B-roll and we don't really care about the audio a lot of times. But in this case, I want the whole video, so I'm going to bring that down into my timeline. So now I've got one clip in my timeline. How do I play through that clip? Well, just use your spacebar. Hit spacebar, and it's going to go ahead and play through the clip. What's happening, guys? Giving you a little free footage here to practice with. And now you notice we see our timeline viewer over here on the right-hand side showing us what's going on in our timeline. So any video clips that are in our timeline will appear over here on the right-hand side. I want to say a quick thank you to Epidemic Sound again for sponsoring today's video. Did you guys know that Epidemic Sound has an app? Look at this. You can have an app here. You can scroll through while you're sitting on the couch. You can check out all your music and things that you want to add to a playlist. Maybe you want to use it later in your videos or something. You don't have to sit there while you're editing and try and find something. You can look anytime you want. Add them to a playlist. Boom, there you go. Come on, what other music service has an app in there that you can save your sound effects and music to, right? Awesome. I love Epidemic Sound. Thank you so much, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring today's video if you want to get a free month link in the description below check it out you guys won't regret it they're awesome i love them let's get back to the video so let's start working with our clip let's talk about some of the things you might want to do with your clip while you're trying to edit together your video here number one we want to make cuts right how do we make cuts on our video clip so you've got a few ways that you can do it if we come down into our timeline put my playhead right here because i want to cut out a little bit of this beginning well in our toolbar up here we've got a lot of different tools that are going to help us out the one that's going to help us make the cuts is this guy right here, the blade edit mode. And you can hit B or just select this tool right here. And then it's going to allow us to come down in the timeline. And if I hover over my clip, you can see it gives us a little razor blade. So if I just click, it's going to go ahead and make cuts. So that's one way that you can make cuts on your clip. If I undo that, the next way that we can make cuts on our clip is to use a keyboard shortcut. And the keyboard shortcut for that razor blade tool is... Command B on a Mac or Control B on a PC. So I'm gonna come back in my toolbar here and click on the little arrow guy. I'm gonna move my playhead forward a little bit and I'm gonna use Command B for me because I'm on a Mac, Control B for you if you're on a PC and boom, it's gonna make a cut. If I jump ahead, Command or Control B makes a cut. And that's how we can go ahead and quickly make a whole lot of cuts on our video clips. So just undoing that, let's say I know I want to get rid of this little bit of beginning part. So I'm going to make a cut there. So let's say I made a few cuts and I want to get rid of this particular clip. How do I do that? Well, with this clip right here, I can select it and use my backspace key. Now it's going to delete it and it's going to leave a gap in my timeline there. So you could then just come and click on that gap. See it highlights a little bit. Hit delete again. And it's going to move everything over for us. And anything that's beyond that in the timeline will get moved over for us. But there's an even quicker way to do that, and it's called ripple delete. So if I select my clip, I can use the delete key, not the backspace key, but the delete key. And it's going to delete that clip and then push everything over all at once. So I don't have to click twice and use two different keystrokes. I can just hit the delete key and... Boom, it's gonna delete that clip and push everything over. So let's say I'm in the middle of my timeline. Let's say I use my keyboard shortcut, Control-B, and then I move ahead a little, Control-B, and I wanna get rid of this part. I can select it, use the delete key, and boom, it pushes everything over and together. So that way, it gets rid of that piece and moves everything for us. It really helps speed up your workflow to use this particular technique. Now, even quicker than having to make the cut, select the clip, and hit delete, is you can do that all in one keystroke. So check this out. If I come to the beginning of my clip here, I can select my clip. I can come up to the trim menu, come on down to ripple. And right here we have start to playhead and we have end to playhead. So depending on which way you want the clip to cut and then delete, you would select the option that you want. So I'm going to say start to playhead and watch what happens to my clip here. Boom, it makes a cut and Ripple deletes it all at the same time. Super handy, that's gonna speed up your workflow a lot. It's something that really comes in handy and uh, is great to use. Now, you don't always have to go to that menu. You can use the keyboard shortcut. So if I just undo that real quick, 
we come back to the trim menu, you can see the default keyboard shortcut is listed right next to it here. It's shift, command, and then the bracket key. On a PC, it's going to be shift, control, and the bracket key. And depending on which way you want to delete, will determine which bracket key you want to use. Now, I do like to change a lot of these keyboard shortcuts to something that works a little better for me and makes a little more sense. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but just know that the option's there, and you can always change the keyboard shortcuts so that it works a little better for you. So just to show you the keyboard shortcut here, if I come down in my timeline, I'm going to use Command, Shift, and the bracket key, and it's going to delete that. If I came to the end of my clip, for example, and use the other bracket key, for me, Command or Control for you, Shift and the other bracket, boom, it's going to delete that part of the clip for me. So before we show you some more cool features here, let's talk about the timeline view options. So come on over here to your timeline view options. And in here, we've got different ways that we can look at our timeline. So we can see multiple timelines at once and be able to flip back and forth between timelines if you have more than one in a project. You can see subtitles if you want. You can also see your audio waveform. So if I turn this off, notice I don't see any waveforms now. If I turn it back on, there's my audio waveforms. So for me, I like to edit with the waveforms on. It makes it real easy to see where you want to make cuts and things. So I always leave those on. Then we've got video view options here. And this is just different ways to view the video clips in our timeline. So in order to be able to use some of the other features, you want to make sure you either have this first one or the middle one turned on. And if we have this one all the way on the right hand side, the simple view, we may not get access to some of the features like being able to easily and quickly fade in our clips with a few handles that I'll show you in a second. So I like to keep the middle one selected and that works out pretty good most of the time. Audio view options, you can change the way the audio waveform looks. You can see a change in as I select it. So you can just make it look however you want. And then down here, we've got the ability to adjust our video track as well as our audio track. So to show you this next tip, how to fade in our clips really quickly and easily, make sure you've got this selected in your video view options. Coming down into the timeline again to fade a clip. If you hover over the clip, you're going to see we get these little handles right here. Just click, hold, and drag in as far as you want that clip to fade in. So let's say I want it to fade in 14, uh, 14 frames. I'm going to play through. What's happening, guys? Give you There you go. A little longer, maybe. What's happening, guys? Giving you a little free. There you go. And if you want to fade the clip out, same thing on the end. Slide that on over. Out of my John Deere tractor. So let's go and do that real quick. And not only does it work with the video files here, if I hover over the audio, we get the same feature. Only there's a little bit more flexibility to it. So we can click hold, drag it in. And you notice we get this little dot right here, right? So I can click hold and drag this down to change the way that audio fades out. Does it fade out quick and then slower? Does it fade out slower than quick at the end? You've got options there on how you want it to appear. And if you don't want it, you can just drag the handle there and slide it back in. Same with the video. Now let's say we want to adjust the length of our clip. How do we do that? Well, if we come into our timeline, select our clip, and if we hover towards the end of the clip, let's move my playhead out of the way there, you can see we get that symbol right there. So all I have to do is click, hold, and drag. And you can see those white boxes show me how long the clip actually is. And I can drag this and put it wherever I want. So if I want to shorten up a, a clip a little bit, I can do it. So that's a quick way to be able to edit the length of your clip without having to make cuts and trim things. Let's say maybe you made a cut and you want to adjust where that cut occurs, right? So if I have a cut right here, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut, Command or Control V. If I come down and I hover over where, where that break is in the clips, I'm going to get a symbol that looks a little like this. And I can click, hold, and drag to change where that cut is happening. Now, some more things you might want to do. What if I want to resize it, make it bigger, make it smaller? I want to flip it around. I want to do things with my video clip or an image or whatever asset it might be. Well, in order to do that, we're going to need to jump into the inspector. So right up here at the top, we've got our inspector. You can go ahead and open that up. And in here, there's a whole bunch of controls that we can use to change our video. Starting with our transform controls under the video right here, we can change the zoom, the position, angle, rotation, pitch, yaw. And all you have to do is come in and when I hover over any one of these numbers, you get a little arrow, right? You can click hold and drag it back and forth to easily make changes to your video clip, to the position, the rotation. You've got a lot of options here on how you can change your clips. And if you want to reset anything, just go ahead and hit the little circles over here. The one at the top is going to reset all of these guys, but the individual ones here next to a particular uh, row here are going to reset just that row. So I'm going to go ahead and reset all of them. Next, you've got cropping down here. If you need to crop an image, you can do that right here. Dynamic zoom, that's going to tell Resolve to just automatically put on a little Ken Burns zoom, right? Where it just zooms in a little bit or zooms out a little bit. It's a real quick, handy tool to use right there. 
Composite mode, you can change your blend modes for clips if you want or change the opacity, right? Real quick and easy. We can change the speed of our clips if we want right here in the inspector. We can stabilize our clips right here in the inspector by clicking stabilize. So anytime that you want to make a change to your clip, you have to have it selected in your timeline and then you can come to your inspector and make a change. For example, if I want to stabilize this clip, I'm going to have it selected, come to stabilization, hit stabilize, let resolve do its thing. Boom, that clip is stabilized and now it shouldn't be as shaky when I'm walking around with a handheld camera. Coming down here, you can also change your lens corrections and you've also got read time and scaling. So I'm not gonna dig too deep into any one of those, but you could play with it, try it out and see how it affects your clip. I do have a lot of videos on all these things and teaching you just a little bit what they are, how they work, why you'd use them, especially like retime and scaling and things like that. So try these things out. And if you are running into a problem where you can't figure out how to do something, drop a comment down below and I'm happy to help you out. In the inspector here, we can also adjust our audio settings. So again, you can select your clip, come to the audio tab right here in the inspector. We can adjust the volume, the pan, if you are in the studio version, you have voice isolation, which is amazing for getting rid of background noise. If you're in the free version, you're not gonna have that voice isolation, but you will have the dialogue leveler in both studio as well as the free version. The dialogue leveler is just gonna help balance out your audio a little bit. And uh, it's almost like adding a compressor, right? Where we have real loud parts and real quiet parts, and it's gonna help bring them together and just make our audio sound a little more consistent. So you might wanna use that. We've got the pitch tool. We've got an EQ that you can use that can be applied on a clip level if you need to do a little EQ work. We've got more advanced tools for audio work, a bigger EQ, a better EQ in Fairlight. But if you want to do some basic audio work here in the edit page, you've got tools to do it. And in the inspector here too, if you had any effects or transitions on your clips, you would see these other categories light up up here. But we don't have those just yet, so we'll get there and uh, then you'll have those categories lit up. All right, let's talk about navigating around the timeline real quick. How do we move around the timeline a little bit? We've got our clip there. Maybe I need to move down the timeline. You know, we do have this scroll bar here. You can slide down, but let's just throw in a few more clips here so then we can talk about how we can zoom around the timeline a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and close my inspector just to get it out of the way there. All right, so here's the next clip that I wanna work with. I can double click it and now it's in my source viewer here so I can drag it down from my source viewer or I could just go straight from the media pool and drag it right into my timeline if I know I wanna put the whole clip in there. So now our clip goes off our timeline. How do we zoom around so we can see it a little bit better? Well, this is where these three tools come in handy. So this first tool here is gonna zoom to the full extent of your timeline. So if I click on that, boom, now I can see my entire timeline. The next one is gonna zoom to a detailed view followed by a custom zoom, which is gonna be dictated by this slider right here. So you can zoom in and out like this and move around your timeline like that. That's a great way to do it, but there are some keyboard shortcuts that might help you out. So if you have a mouse with a middle mouse wheel, that's what you're gonna to wanna to use is that middle mouse wheel. So if you just hover down in your timeline, if you hold the shift key and roll your middle mouse wheel up and down, you're gonna see it's gonna zoom in and out vertically, right, for either my audio or my video, depending on where my cursor is. If you hold the control key on a PC or a command key on a Mac and you move that middle mouse wheel, it's going to pan down the timeline. If you hold your alt key on a PC or your option key on a Mac and that same middle mouse wheel, then it's going to zoom in on the timeline horizontally and zoom out horizontally. So it's real quick to use those couple keyboard shortcuts with the middle mouse wheel to get around your timeline. Now, let's say I wanted to just, you know, quickly pan down the timeline. You can push and hold on your middle mouse wheel and drag down the timeline. And that's also gonna be another way that you can pan down through the timeline. So super handy, keep these couple tools up here in mind when you wanna zoom around your timeline. A lot of times I'm always coming in and out here moving this guy around and it works out pretty good. But those keyboard shortcuts are handy to help you move around a little bit quicker. So let's say I'm gonna grab the rest of my tracks here. I'm gonna select multiple tracks by holding my control key or command key on a Mac, select all my clips. I'm just gonna drag them and drop them down into the timeline. Now you do have other tools on being able to insert clips in a spot. For example, if I have a clip right here and I want to insert it, you know, in between these two clips, I can put my playhead there. And we have this little guy right here, insert clip. We can replace clips or overwrite clips, or we can replace, swap clips, right? We'll just take whatever was there, whoop, whoop, slap, swap it out with a new one and, uh, and be good to go there. So I'm not going to demonstrate those. You can play with them if you need them. But the other thing that you can do that's really cool too, is if you've got a clip in your source viewer, and you just want some more options other than, you know, these couple of things right here. If I click hold and drag it on top of my timeline view over here, we get different options, right? We've got insert, overwrite, replace, fit to fill, place on top, appended and end, ripple, overwrite. So a lot of options here. I'm not going through all of it. 
but you got the basic idea of how to get our video clips into our timeline so that we can start working with it. A couple more things about the timeline here. If we wanted more tracks, we could just pick on any video. And if we just drag it down there, it'll automatically create a new track for us. But if we wanted to do it on our own, we want to do it manually, you can just come over to your track area, right click and say, add a track. And it's going to add in a new track for you for both audio or video. Add a track, stereo track, boom, there's two audio tracks as well as two video tracks. You can rename your tracks by clicking on the name right here, video one, we can change that to footage. You can rename your audio tracks the same way. Looking at our video tracks here, we've got a few different things here. We can lock our tracks so that we don't accidentally make any changes. The auto track selector, if this is turned off like that, we're not gonna be able to make any changes. It's almost like locking your track, although you can still move things around, but you can't make cuts on the track and accidentally cut something that you didn't wanna cut. But for the most part, you wanna make sure that that's always turned on. And then right here, disable video track. If you click on that, it's gonna turn off that track and you won't see it. Down in the audio, same thing, we can lock our track. The auto track selector, you wanna make sure that's turned on the majority of the time. You can solo a track, which means only play audio from that track or the tracks which have that solo button turned on and green like that. So you can do that. And then you've also got a mute button right here. All right, so at this point, we should have a whole bunch of clips in our timeline. We should be ready to start editing together this video, making cuts, and just kind of putting together these clips so that it actually looks like, you know, a well-edited video, right? So if you guys are with me here, you're doing great. And now I just want to give you guys a few minutes to go through, edit up this footage, and see what you can come up with. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to speed through it in just a few seconds here. But I'm going to use all the basic tools that we already talked about. Once I edit together my little video and you edit together yours, we're going to come back, talk about how to add some cool things like some transitions, maybe an effect or two that are built right into Resolve here, as well as some problems you might have when you're trying to do those things. Then we'll talk about some audio real quick, talk about how do we render out our project, and you're going to have all the basic tools and pieces that you need to start editing video here in Resolve. Remember, this program is deep. There is a lot to learn. Take it slow. Tackle it one problem at a time. You guys are going to get there. We're going to get our first video made here. So I'm going to edit this up. We'll be back in like, I don't know, three seconds, five seconds. You guys work on yours, and then we'll start adding in some of that other cool stuff. <laughs> Now, as we're editing this together, a couple more tips for you here. If you want to select everything in your timeline to be able to move it around, you can zoom out and you can use, make sure you've got the uh, little arrow tool here selected. You can just select your clips and then you can click, hold and drag and move them around. Another tip for you while you're editing together your video, let's say you want to swap a clip, right? I want to switch these two clips. There is some cool commands to do that, but another easy way for a beginner here is to just, boop, drag this guy up a track, move it over, drag it back, and then drop this other clip back in. So that's going to make it pretty quick and easy just to swap two clips for you here in your timeline. Now, you might have noticed that my clip is actually snapping to certain points. So if we look at our timeline right here, we've got a little magnet icon and that's gonna turn on snapping. So right now it's on, but if I turn it off and I drag this up, notice I it's a little trickier to get it to go right where I want it, right? Because if I mess up and I pull it down, it's gonna overwrite part of a clip, right? So we wanna make sure that that magnet, magnet is turned on. The other tool that's important that you might have questions on is this one right here, linking, right? So let me just show you this real quick. If I look at my clip here and I select just the video, I can move both the video and the audio together. But let's say I accidentally turn that off and I grab my video clip and now the video's over here and the audio's there so they don't line up. Oh no, what do I do? So you're gonna see little red numbers down here which tells you how far out of alignment the clips are. So one, you wanna drag it back till those red numbers disappear which means you're lined right back up with the audio and the video, right? But if this was moved out of whack and then you accidentally turn the link back on, now if I move them around, they move together but they're not synced up. So you might need to uncheck that, move them back together, and then turn your link icon back on. And for the majority of the time, you're gonna to wanna to leave this link icon on because you want your audio and your video to move together. So make sure that that's turned on. If you run into issues where your audio and your video are separated and you're having problems, check out that link icon, that might be your problem. So another thing I might wanna do is speed up a clip, right? For example, with this clip right here, I'm taking off the bolts, it takes a little while. I just want it to go fast through it. So how do I speed up a clip? Few ways that you can do it. One way is to select your clip, have it highlighted, come open your inspector right up here, scroll down and we have change speed. So I can come down here and I can just drag the wheel to whatever speed that I want and make it go as fast as I want. And that could work out just fine. Or if I reset this, close my inspector, come down in the timeline, if I select my clip, I can use the keyboard shortcut Control-R or Command-R on a Mac, 
and that's going to bring up my read time controls. And when we see it in the timeline here, we notice it's got these little blue arrows right at the top. So I can hover my mouse over my clip. And if I go to just the right spot, we'll get those double little arrows there. So I click, hold and drag. You can see it's increasing the speed at that percentage that you see on the bottom center of the clip. So I can make it go as fast or as slow as I want. And once this window's up too, I can also click on this little drop down arrow and change the speed here to some preset options. I can also make it go backwards, forwards, or reset it. You've got some options there, but it's a, it's a really handy tool to know how to use. So in this case, let's say I want it to be three seconds long, right? How do I do that? Well, I could just eyeball it, right? Or I can put my playhead at the beginning of the clip and I can move my playhead forward three seconds. So how do I do that? You can move your playhead by using your arrow keys and that's gonna go frame by frame. So if I just hit my right arrow key, I move ahead frame by frame. If I press my back arrow key, frame by frame backwards. But if I use my shift key and then hit the arrow forward, boom, it jumps ahead one full second. And if I do it again, that's two full seconds. And one more time, that is three full seconds that my playhead jumped ahead. So now if I zoom in on my timeline, come down here, hover over my clip, get these two little arrows and slide this guy in till I get to my playhead, just like that right there, snap it in. And now that clip is sped up and it's only three seconds long. So let's take a look at it here. If I go from here to the next clip. Okay, there's me doing it real quick. Now we hear the audio and we can take care of that in a minute there, but that's how you can speed up your clips there really quick and really easy. All right, so I've got a rough edit going here. It's working out pretty good. How's your guys' videos coming? All right, not too bad, right? So now what do we want to do next? Let's talk about playback, right? So maybe you're editing that video and you're like, man, it's just choppy. It's not playing back smooth. How do I get it to play back smooth? I just want to take a minute here to thank Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. Love you guys. They've been super supportive of my channel here on YouTube. And really, if you guys want to help take your videos to the next level, you need high quality music and sound effects. That's going to take your video from here, boom, and jump you up a level. Check out Epidemic Sound. I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't think they weren't awesome, and they are awesome. So you should head on over to that link in the description below. Check them out. Get a free month. At least give it a try. What do you got to lose, right? A month for free. Head on over there. Check it out. Thank you, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring today's video. Love you guys. Let's get back to the video. Here's some settings that you can change that are gonna help that playback be a little bit smoother. So come on up into the playback menu at the top here. Come on down to timeline proxy resolution. Right now I'm on full, but if your playback's a little slow, maybe your computer specs aren't so great, change that to half or quarter. And that's gonna just reduce the quality of the playback. It's not gonna affect your render. You don't even have to change this when you go to render, but select one of these guys and that's gonna help make your playback a little bit smoother. Most of the time when I select half, I can't even see a difference. And if I come back to that playback menu and select quarter, then I can see it gets a little bit, you know, fuzzy looking almost, like not as sharp. But when you render it out, your video is still gonna be your top notch quality, so you don't have to worry about that and you don't have to change this. It's just gonna make playback a little smoother here in Resolve for you. The next setting you wanna check out, again, up in the playback menu, come on down to render cache and you wanna set this to smart. So this is gonna tell Resolve, hey, while I'm uh, not working or while you have some time, render some stuff in the background, things like transitions or effects. So that way, when I go to play back my video, it plays back a little bit smoother. So I always leave this on smart and I think that works out really well. Now, if you're still having problems with your playback, you can create optimized media or proxy files. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but you've got the option to create those in order to help your playback if you're working with high, really high res files, you know, 4K, 8K, 12K, who's doing 12K? Who's doing 8K? I mean, I don't even do 4K, let's be honest. I don't even do 4K. But you can create proxy files which are gonna help make your playback smoother um, if you're having troubles there on your computer. All right, now we're gonna get into some fun stuff here, transitions. I know everybody out there loves transitions. I have a whole crash course on transitions. I'll link it up here. You can go check that out if you wanna know all the ins and outs of transitions. But how do we find some transitions and put them in between our clips? So I'm gonna come on over here to the left. I'm gonna close my media pool and I'm gonna go ahead and open up my effects library right here. And in here, we've got video transitions. So go ahead and click on that. Now there are a whole bunch of preset transitions here in Resolve. A lot of them are really great. We can edit them and make tweaks to them to kind of customize them a little bit. But there's a lot of great stuff in here. You've got some basic ones dissolving and blurs at the top. Um, I'm gonna actually put my playhead where I wanna put a transition so I can preview what the transition's gonna look like. We've got smooth cuts here. If you wanted a smooth cut, uh, regular cross dissolve is your default transition. You've got different shapes you can use, right? 
And if we continue to scroll down, different types of motion. And it's great that in Resolve 18 here, we can see the preview of what this is. We don't have to put it on and then try it out, right? You've got lots of different things here. And then you've got fusion transitions. So these are the cool ones, right? So you come down here. Let's say you want a film strip. You can see it up over there in my timeline viewer. We want to 3D flip the image. We want a foreground wipe, right? You've got all kinds of great stuff in here that you can try out, play with. You can customize. A lot of great stuff here. So how do we add one onto our clips? So let's say I just want to do, um, what, do we, what do we want to do here? What, what are you thinking? What are you guys thinking? Let's just do a foreground wipe. I use this one a lot for, for my video. So I'm going to click on it, hold, and drag it down. And I'm just going to drop it on that cut in between our two clips. And now you see we see a transition on here. So if I go ahead and zoom in a little bit. You can see right here is our transition, and it's a smooth transition from one clip to the next using this effect. So if I come back here and I play through our transition, this is what it looks like. That real quick. All right, and there it is. So it's pretty quick and easy. Now, maybe I want the transition to be a little bit longer or shorter. I can just hover over the end of it, drag it out longer, or push it a little bit shorter. And maybe I don't like that transition. I want a different one. Let's say I want to do, uh, let's do the camera shake. I'm going to click, hold, drag, and I can just drop it right on top of the transition that's already there, and it's going to replace it. So if I play through this, here's what we got. We can do that real quick. All right, so we're... Boom, there you go. Pretty good. Not bad, right? Real quick and easy to drag and drop it on there. Now, let's say for some reason I cannot drop a transition on the clip. So if I just make a little example here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. And now I try to drop a transition right on these clips, right, in between them. Let's just grab our pan down. I'm trying to drop it on there, and notice... And I let go, nothing happens. It's not dropping on there. Why can't I drop a transition onto these clips? The reason you can't drop a transition onto these clips is because you're at the either very end or the very beginning of the clip. And you need a little bit of space on either side of the cut in order for that transition to work. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I cut this back a little bit, right, make that clip a little shorter, and I make this one a little shorter, then I put them together and I try that same transition, now I can put the transition on there because I've got space on either side of the cut from these clips. And just to illustrate that, I'm going to select this clip right here. See where the box is, the white box? That's showing me where my clip is and how much I have on either side of my cuts. Same thing on the other side. You can see we have a little bit of overlap. So a lot of people get hung up on this that, hey, I can't drop a transition. Why do I have to trim my clips? Other programs don't work like that. Not true. They all do kind of blend each other and they need some overlap, right? They might do it a little bit different, and it might look different when you're editing together the video clip, but it's doing the same thing. So you have to trim the clips a little bit here in Resolve. It can be just a few frames if that's all you want. You don't need a ton on either side of that cut, but that's how you get a transition to drop on there if you're having problems and you can't drop a transition on there. Big thing that people run into, so keep that in mind. Remember how that works. Now, if you want to customize a transition, again, it's pretty easy. Use your little, little arrow guy here. I'm going to actually select my transition. Now go open your inspector at the top here. And now you can see we've got motion blur that we can add. And different transitions are going to have different options that you can change. This one doesn't have a whole ton. You can just add in some motion blur there, change settings. Um, but you're going to have options with each of the transitions right here in the inspector. And the inspector is your go-to place for making changes to clips or assets or other things that you've got in your timeline. So now that we've got a good understanding of how to work with our video here in DaVinci Resolve, we need to talk about some audio. And I love me some good audio. I'm an audio nerd. And in Resolve here, we have some great tools for working with our audio. Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, and I'm super thankful for Epidemic Sound and the awesome service that they provide. They've got great music, great sound effects. There's just so much good stuff on there, and I've been using them for quite a while. And I'm never disappointed. Anytime I jump on there, I can find awesome, high-quality music and sound effects for my videos. Epidemic Sound offers royalty-free music so that you never have to worry about copyright strikes on any of your videos or anything getting taken down. They own all their music, so you never have to worry about running into any trouble for using music that you shouldn't be using. They have a huge library with over 35,000 tracks and over 90,000 sound effects. Dude, that's, let me tell you something, that's a lot of sound effects. You'll pretty much be able to find anything that you need. And all of their audio is great for podcasts, for YouTube videos, for clients, for your own personal work. You can use it anywhere that you want when you have a subscription. You can monetize your videos still. You don't have to worry about not being able to monetize because you use the wrong music. If you're signed up with Epidemic Sound, you can use that music for pretty much anything and you don't have to worry. So one of my favorite parts about Epidemic Sound is actually being able to download stems for the music. What that means is maybe I don't want the whole track, right? I want everything except for maybe the person singing, right? Well, I can download all the other tracks and put my music together without the singer in there. Or maybe I just want bass and drums, right? Because 
we like beats, right? I can download just the bass track and just the drum track and use that in my video instead of all of the other instruments and singers that might come in the track. I love that. That is awesome. One of my favorite parts of Epidemic Sound. So if you want to give it a try, I got a link in the description below. Check that out. You're going to get one month for free and anything that you download and try, you're free to use. You're good to use on any video that you got as long as it was downloaded during that trial period. And then if you want to cancel, you can cancel, but I recommend you keep going with it because audio is one of those things that really just helps take your videos to that next level. And Epidemic Sound can help you get there with awesome assets for music, sound effects, you name it, they've got you covered. So if I didn't believe in Epidemic Sound and think that they had a really top-notch product, I wouldn't be sharing it with you guys. So I just try to share with you guys tools that I use that just make my videos better, make the job easier. And this is one of those tools that I think can really help take your videos to that next level. So thank you, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring today's video. I love you guys. Really appreciate you and the high-quality assets that you guys provide for all of us. It's awesome. I love it. So now let's jump onto their website. We're going to go ahead and download one sound effect that we can use for our transitions, maybe like a whoosh, right? And we're also going to go grab a music track that we can put underneath our video. So that way it just adds a little more style to it, a little more vibe to it, right? So let's go download some assets here, get our audio in. We're going to talk about how to set our levels for our dialogue as well as our levels for our background music. All right, here we are on Epidemic Sound. I want to go download some whooshes because who doesn't love a good whoosh sound effect, right, in our videos for transitions, right? So I am going to go to Browse, and we've got Sound Effects. And what I really like is everything's categorized really nicely here. We've got Whoosh. That's what I want. Jump in there. And now we've got tons of Whooshes here. I'm just going to play through a few, and we're just going to pick one and download it. All right, here's one that I like. If I want to download it, I'm just going to go ahead and click the Download button. I want MP3. You can also get a wave. I always go to the MP3s because that's what I like. Download. Boom, there we go. We got it. Now I want to go pick out a cool music track. So we're going to come on back up to Browse. Go moods, and uh, so I'm going to go happy because I'm happy to be learning Resolve here. All right, so there's tons of good stuff here. You can see I'm going to go with this one here, Night Shimmer, because it's kind of cool. I'll download that. And this is where you can get those stems I was talking about. So you can get the full mix, which is the complete song. Or if I click on here, you can get the melody, the instruments, the bass, the drums. You can pick the part that you want. I'm just going to go with the full mix for this one, but I love having that option, man. Super sweet. So go ahead and click download, and then we're going to get these into our project. So how do we get these assets into our project? Remember from the beginning? Drag and drop, right? We can drag and drop anything. So back in Resolve here, I'm going to close my effects library. I'm going to open my media pool. Now I can just drag in and drop them right in here if I want, or I can create a new folder or bin for them. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to right click, new bin, and I'm going to call this music. Like we talked about earlier, all I have to do is drag and drop. Boom, there, everything's in there. So I'm going to zoom out my timeline a little bit. We can move our mouse wheel, scroll around, and I'm going to add in my music. So I'm going to select my music, just drag it down, drop it in the timeline, and move it all the way over. Now I can change the size of my windows a little bit by hovering and dragging. You can see we should change the size there a little bit. Now, when I look at my waveform here for my music, it's loud, right? So how do we adjust the volume or the levels of our music? You've got a few different ways that you can do it. I can select my clip. I can come to my inspector, which is already open right here. And in the audio tab, I can change the volume right there, just like that. And we're going to want to drop that back. Now, a lot of times when you have music behind your speaking clips or your dialogue, I'm going to want to make that a little bit quieter, right? I want that probably to be down in that, you know, minus uh, maybe 18 to maybe minus 30, depending on the song. So we'll start with like maybe minus 25 and see how that works out. Now, the other place that you can edit your audio levels, which is actually even a little quicker, is down on the clip. You see we've got this white line here. And if I hover over it, we get that symbol. And I can click, hold, and drag. And that's essentially changing the volume. But you can do it right here on the clip, which works out really, really handy. So I'm going to leave that where it is for right now. Let's just play through the beginning here and see how it sounds. What's happening, guys? Giving you a little free footage here to practice with. You can work with the audio, work with the video. This is just a quick couple clips here. Free All right, not bad. Might need to be a little bit quieter there. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. First thing we need to do is open up our mixer. And we actually should have did this with our music too so that we can see where our music is falling on our mixer. So that we got the mixer open, we can see our meters, we know where our audio levels are going to be at. If I come over here and I'm just going to play just the music track so we can double check this because we should have had the mixer open in the beginning there. I'm going to come over here, play through my music track, watch my meters. I'm around minus 30 dB right here. All right, that's not bad. And when it gets a little louder... Okay, it's around maybe minus 28 dB. I'm okay with that. I'm good. We're going to leave that where it is. Now, when it comes to our dialogue track, we want our dialogue to sit around maybe minus 12 dB or so, minus 10 dB. That's going to give you some good levels and a good place to start. Because too loud and you're going to be peaking, not loud enough, and people aren't going to be able to hear you. So I'm going to come to my audio tracks here. I'm going to turn off 
the solo on my uh, music track. I'm actually going to mute that. And now I'm going to just play through my dialogue track here. And I'm going to watch my meters, right? We are on camera, right? That's the channel that we're looking at here. So I'm going to play through. And I want that meter to light up around that minus 10 dB. Now, if it's not there, I'm going to change that by coming to my clip and either hovering over this white line and making it louder or quieter. Or you can use the volume in the inspector. That's up to you. You could do it either way. I like using the little line on the clip. So let's play through the clip and see what we got. What's happening, guys? Giving you a little free footage here to practice with. You can work with the audio. Work. So it's a little loud there. So I'm going to bring that back down. Minus 2 dB. Work with the video. This is just a quick couple clips here. Freebies for you guys I do have. You can see where the line stopped. That's where the audio has peaked. It's gotten as loud as it can. Now, you don't want it to go up into the red there. You want it to be around that minus 10 dB. So in this case, that looks pretty good. And since I filmed this all very similar fashion, um, if I select my clip and I look in the inspector, I can see I'm at minus 2.06. So let's just make that minus 2 because it's easier. I'm going to do that with the rest of my audio clips. I'm going to select them all. Inspector, audio section, select the volume and minus 2. Boom. Now they're all going to match. And we should be pretty good. So I can just spot check it, check my meters. To do that, you're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench here. It's so we got our music in there. How do we add in this cool sound effect that we got? So I'm going to come to my sound effect, my little whoosh here, and I'm just going to click hold and drag it down into the timeline. So I can zoom in on my timeline and I see where my transition is right here. So I just want to line up my music or my sound effect here with that transition kind of on the middle of the transition. And then when I do that, here's what it sounds like. So let's get into doing that. All right, a little loud there, a little loud. So we can reduce the volume of that sound effect by dragging down that white line or changing it in the inspector. And here's what it looks like. And doing that. And there you go. That's how you could just drop in the sound effect really easily. So we've got the basics of our video here. If you want to do some color grading and color adjustments, you can jump into the color tab. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but you can make adjustments there if you want. Let's jump into the deliver tab right here at the end because you finished this cool project. You want to render it out. How do we do that? So in the deliver tab here, you do have a bunch of different preset options here at the top of the screen. You can use those if you'd like. Personally, I like to use some custom settings because I think it comes out a little bit better than using something like the YouTube export here, but you can use that as a place to start. So I'm just going to click on custom export. You can name your file. You can select the location. You want a single clip under export video. Make sure that's checked on. You've got options of different formats that you can use. A lot of times I like to do MP4 and I'm going to do H.264. You can do H.265 or it, dep it depends on the format that you want. Uh, but this is the way that I usually do it. You can make it in 1080. So if you edited your video in 1080 and that's the way you want to deliver it, you can do that. If you want 4K, you can change your timeline resolution to 4K or you can change it here to 4K. It's better to change the timeline resolution itself up to 4K. But uh, for this case, I'm just going to show you the 1080, 1920 by 1080 here on the settings that I would use. You select your frame rate, and most of this is going to match what your timeline is already set up as. Under quality, you can do automatic, but what I like to do for 1080 is I like to restrict it, and I'm going to do 40,000 right here. And that works out pretty good, and the rest I'm going to leave as is. And then before I click on this add to render queue over here at the bottom, you've got right here render. What do I want to render? Do you want to render an in and out range, which is this gray bar up here? Or do you want to do the entire timeline? I'm going to select the entire timeline because that's what I want to do. So once you have your save location set and everything else good to go, you go ahead and hit add to render queue and it's going to pop it on up over here. Then that's your job and all your settings are saved there. So you can have multiple ways of rendering this if you want one that's higher quality, one that's lower quality, different resolutions, whatever it might be. You've got options and you can keep them all over here. Then you just select the one you want and you go ahead and hit render. And then it's going to go ahead and render it out and put it wherever you selected in your file location over here. I do have settings that I use for 4K exports as well. I'm going to link up video up over here that's going to show you the presets that I use and how I created them and how you can create them too. So you just got a one click option, boom, done and you can go ahead and export your project. So check out that video if you want to know how to do that. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this video here. Quick start guide. I know there was a lot of information in there, but these are some of the basic tips, techniques, tools you need in order to start editing here in DaVinci Resolve. And like I said at the beginning, there's a way more to this program than you could fit in any length of video. There's so much going on, but tackle those problems as you get to it. And little by little, you're going to learn Resolve and you're going to be off and running. It took me a long time too. And uh, I'm here to answer your guys' questions. I've got lots of videos to help you along the way. So drop a comment if you have a question. Don't worry about it. I'm here to help you guys out and get you going into DaVinci Resolve. Huge thank you to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. 
Love you guys, Epidemic Sound. Really appreciate you sponsoring the channel here. And if you guys want to try out some Epidemic Sound, hit up the link in the description below. So many good assets there. You guys are going to love it if you try it out first month for free and you get to continue using all of that music or assets or sound effects, whatever it is. You get to keep using it too after that month. So you got nothing to lose. Check it out. With that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, checking out this video. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.